thanks for joining us today. I'm Tamara Rollison. I'm a CDOT spokesperson representing the Denver region. And I want to introduce yourself. I'm Tony Minigetti. I'm the CDOT engineering lead on the emergency response. So what's going on as what has been going on over the last two days? We're still in the emergency phase of what's going on with US 36 eastbound at Wadsworth. We have experienced a failure with the road and also as you can see the retaining wall behind me. If you look behind me, you can see how it is coming down due to foundation issues uh, deep, deep under the ground. And so in the last 24 hours, it continues to move, it continues to shift in the roadway, particularly the wall is, is still moving right now. So we are not doing any work on this because the damage is just too severe. We are in the process of getting a construction contractor on site this week as soon as possible to begin the rebuilding process of this section of US um, 36 eastbound. The top of the roadway started as cracks. They got wider and wider. And if you were to go up there, you would see that it looks like a sinkhole. It's, it's very wide and it's very deep right now. So that's the situation with the section of US 36 eastbound. And we hope to get a construction contractor soon. We will this week to begin the rebuild of it. Now, our focus is getting eastbound lanes open. And so we expect to do that by Wednesday morning. Obviously, they're not going to be open on the damaged section. But what we're going to do is we're going to shift traffic to the westbound side of US 36. The westbound side is in good condition. The bridge that you see over there is in very good condition. There are no issues with that whatsoever. So we will be shifting uh, eastbound traffic to the westbound side so that there will be two lanes of eastbound traffic separated by median bar barrier with two lanes of westbound traffic for a section of about half mile. So we're turning the express lane on that westbound side and the shoulders into two additional lanes. So we'll have plenty of room to be able to do that, but we'll still be a little tight traffic wise. We certainly appreciate the patience of motorists um, as we go through this. Eastbound is going to be closed today, tonight, through tomorrow, tomorrow night, and uh, we will have access for eastbound travelers come Wednesday morning. So we still encourage motorists who are traveling, especially on eastbound 30, who usually take eastbound 36 from Boulder to Denver to use alternate routes. If they are able to telework, that would be a good idea. If they can do that for the rest of today, tonight, and tomorrow, and uh, just give yourself plenty of time, at least an extra half hour, to get to your destination if you're traveling in that way. So that's really the update that I have for this. Is there anything that you want to add, Timmy? Are there any additional questions? Yeah. Yeah, yesterday when we were talking with the engineers, they kind of were able to talk a little bit about the rate that it was seeking at. I believe they said an inch an hour, but that that was rapidly increasing. What are we seeing at this point? It's about the same. It, it really deter it depends on where you're measuring this from. So up at the top, there are a lot of different points that are moving at different, at different rates. So I would say we'll keep it at about an inch an hour, but it's still moving. And, and yesterday we, we took some action to separate the wall from the, the rest of the structure. And so once we did that, that, that uh, uh, the movement accelerated. And so that's kind of where we're at right now. We're just kind of waiting to see if, uh, you know, what's going to transpire. And I know that buttress that y'all tried to build at the bottom had kind of failed a little bit. Well, not necessarily that it failed, but this uh, concrete started falling off. The Tony, you need the answer. Right. So they okay. can hear you. Thank you. <laughs> it started falling off, so they had pulled back. Have y'all been able to do any, I mean, I know you're not doing work on the road, but have you been able to do anything for reinforcement on that side as well? We have not. And we, well, we're going to wait until we have a contractor on board before we uh, move on with a, a repair procedure. Tamara, for CDOT, we're, we've been in contact with a guy who, during the 36 expansion, um, he owns a private transportation business, and he says that whenever um, the, the, rep the representative at the time was holding those meetings, CDOT was warned about using a private contractor on this. That's like something like, like this could potentially happen. Mm -hmm. Were there those warnings and were they potentially ignored by CDOT? I can't really speak to that. As I said, I know that you all have questions about the, the public-private partnership involvement, and we, we, we will get to those issues and those questions, but not today. We're just focusing on the safety and operations of, the, of what's going on right now. And one more question, not necessarily about business about that, but for CDOT moving forward, I know you have for individual drivers with these detours. What about this private company that they solely rely on 36? to transport sure. their clients back and forth. What is their, your plan for them going forward? Well, 
we won't have the express lane in operation on, on when we make this traffic switch. We'll have two lanes in each direction for about a half mile. And then the rest of the, the express lanes will be operational for the rest of the time. So there will be a little bit of squeeze in that area until we can get this section of the roadway open. What's saying that what's happened here won't happen on the other side or on any other part of this area, knowing the moisture and the amount of water that once was here with this highway was The wall on the other side is a completely separate structure, and we don't believe there that this, there's any similar issues with the foundation over on that side. What was the, was there a difference in material then that would, have, would allow this one to then crumble the way that it did? Um, you know, this is still kind of something that we're investigating as far as the specific cause of this side. So I'm not really able to give any details about specifically what's causing it. I mean, we know just in general that it's it's, it's a slide failure of the of the MSE wall, but the, as to what the specific cause of it is, we can't say at this time. So, so when you get into that phase, obviously, like you mentioned, ongoing investigation, but when you get to a point where you are able to start reconstructing this area, is there anything that can be done from preventing this from happening again? I mean, knowing again, like that this is like marshland and like the soil is so soft. Correct. Like why rebuild here then? You know, I think that was taken into account the first time. So that's why we're looking into it in more detail to see if there's something that maybe you know, we overlooked or something that happened that, you know, we couldn't have foreseen. Um, and, you know, that, that'll be involved in, in, you know, coming up with the design plan and the rebuild plan. I guess I'd ask just, you know, I'm a driver that uses this area and I know that there obviously there are thousands of other drivers. So what's keeping them safe from feeling that they're not going to fall into some earthquake looking crater while they're driving right. in these temporary lanes and even future lanes? I mean, we've inspected the west side and we're continuing to look at it very closely. We don't have any reason to believe that there's any risk at all to the traveling public. We haven't seen any indications that there's any 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 signs of, of settlement on the west side. From the beginning, was it just a failure of poor soil samples during construction? We don't know that. To piggyback off Kelly's question, though, on the other side, yesterday when we were talking to engineers, they had mentioned it has to do with something about being further away from where the lake used to be with that water. Is that still the case? If that is indeed the, the cause, you know, there's been there's been discussions that because of the wet winter and because of the wet uh, spring, that the you know the water table is higher in this area because it is you know a wetland area. Um, we don't think that that would carry over to the west side. How long has CDOT known about this? Uh, we noticed a crack on Monday, a very small crack, and then by Thursday it, it had widened, and then Friday is when we noticed that you know that it was continuing, and that's when the road was initially closed. How much time and money are you guys prepared to spend? We don't know that at this point. We'll have a better idea of that once we procure a contractor and once we know what the extent of the, re the rebuild will be, then we'll have a better idea on how much the cost will be and how, how long it will take to uh, get, get this rebuilt and get it back open to traffic. CDOT has an emergency contracting process that we're following um, and it's, it's, it, it is a very fast process but it still is going to take a couple days. Can you detail what that process is? We basically we choose three contractors and we bring them out to look at the, the issue and then we present them with a scope of work and uh, summary of quantities and then they give us a bid and then we'll select a contractor that way. I know we don't want to touch on plenary but if, if there's a, a hole in, on the highway who goes to fix it? CDOT or plenary? We would fix that. You would fix yeah, it? See, that, that's, that's, that's what we're focused on and, and, and we are, are the ones we're out on the discussions right now at all? Can we say that? I mean, they're, they, I think they're providing traffic control for, for us on this. But they're not involved necessarily in the reconstruction or it's, consulting anything? It's just, it's too early to go into that right now as far as what, what, their, what, what their role is. Again, you know, we can get to that later on as far as their involvement and their role in that kind of thing. Are there any other stretches, like even close by, that you might see what is like a small crack or any cracks at all that they're trying to prevent or work on? This is this is a focused area and very isolated. And so and it, it would be only yeah. the area that is just you know just the wall. Right. I mean it wouldn't be in these areas that are that are on embankment. Okay. So there's no concern for it spreading further. No. Mm -hmm. 
As far as all the detours and everything like that around 36, has CDOT been tracking what those times look like for drivers that will typically use this thoroughfare? Well, actually, this morning we noticed that traffic was heavier on the westbound side, and it usually is on US 36 as people are going into Boulder. We expect for it to be, we expect for the traffic to pick up quite a bit as people return from Boulder or they go east. And so we do expect heavy traffic uh, this, this afternoon. We, we have seen about, I don't know, 20 to 30 minute delays or so. So we are uh, trying to warn motorists to expect delays of up to a half hour if they are traveling eastbound 36 during the peak travel times. Is there any worry about the bridge at all? I mean, since maybe more time has passed now, you've had more time to look at it. I mean, the pylon for the bridge, I mean, it's that, that crater or that where the wall is falling apart right there is very close to that bridge. Are you worrying about the bridge falling down too? No, yesterday we took steps to, to separate the wall from the bridge. All those, all those steel and, and concrete connections were cut. And so that resulted in some additional settlement. But at this point, we don't, we're not concerned. I, you may want to talk about how that built, how that bridge is built, and how deeply the, the piers go into the uh, into the rock. Right. So the the, the abutment is uh, basically um, a large concrete pour that is over um, steel pilings that are driven into bedrock. So the abutment is what the girders are set on, and the approach slab is is basically the transition from the roadway onto the bridge. And yesterday we cut the approach slab. And so now, there, and, and we also um, cut the, the expansion joint and the sleeper slab, so now there's, there's no connection between the wall and the bridge. And um, we don't think that there's, there's any risk of the bridge being damaged. But the bridge is sitting on piers, it's placed on piers, and those piers go very, very, very deep down to rock. And that's generally how bridges are built right now. So. From what you guys have seen just in your experience out here with all of this, by this time tomorrow, how much more will that have sunk? I don't think we can say that right now. I think it, you know, it's, it's really a day-to-day -day thing. Is there a part of the emergency contract and the emergency construction, is there insurance to see that short for this type of thing? That I wouldn't know. I would have to get I'd have to get back with you on that. I would imagine Part of the investigation then too and on whether it be with the different contractor that you select will you select a different type of material like is that something that has to be considered for the wall or for any other type of structure renewal knowing that this is a issue we'll see once once our contractor comes out or construction contractor comes out and then we'll have more information as to how the rebuild of this will progress so. trains won't be affected will keep going i believe so how Thanks, everybody. I'm sorry, cut down. Uh, yeah. How much did it change before? Because before this highway was built, the train went through there, and there was a bridge over it, if I remember right. Because I drove this every day. I live up near Boulder. Right, right. And so did this change a lot? Did you guys have to, to re-engineer this whole area from the before Highway 36 to what we currently have as Highway 36? Well, there was uh, substantial construction. If you compare the old US 36, I mean, that, that's, it used but, to be but this to particular the new US section, 36. Did this particular section change drastically from the old to the new? Because I remember it, it always was a high flyover where you could overlook this mud bog lake that used to be out here. Did it change a lot? I can't yeah. remember what it looked like before. I can't speak to that. I, yeah, I can't. You know. I wasn't. I can't speak to that as well. But. I'm just wondering what, what happened. Why happened this happened? But there the was definitely. But when US 36 was rebuilt, it was. Widen express lanes are built in each direction. Bridges will be built. Major, if you if, if you remember what US 36 was like years ago in the, in the early 80s, it was it's a much it's a much different uh, infrastructure now to take on more traffic. Okay, so to get to the, it's three contractors that will come in, to take a look at this, and submit bids. How do you get to those three? Uh, they were just kind of based yeah. on on companies that we've worked with before and that you know had availability to come out here. 